Okay, so welcome. Today we're going to look at cholera. Uh, cholera is um, a very interesting uh, disease. It's also a very old disease. It has been described uh, for a very long time. And it has been a cause of major, major kind of epidemics uh, throughout the world. So as you can see um, on my first slide is that these are typical what we call um, cholera beds. And they usually have like a hole or on them and then is a bucket that collects the, um, the diarrhea basically that uh, the patient has. And also another bucket here to help, uh, especially during vomiting. So this is because um, this disease uh, usually has a profuse kind of um, uh, diarrhea uh, that is almost nonstop and vomiting to the point that even the patient cannot uh, really stand up and go uh, and help themselves. Um, like in a, in a loo or something. So they just have to, they help themselves just where they are. So if they are put on this bed, then it helps uh, because it helps one in collecting very easily the waste or the, the diarrhea. And also secondly, it helps um, in fluid management because you will know the amount of uh, uh, fluid that has been lost through diarrhea and, and vomiting. So, Let's um, go directly into the gist of the matter. So cholera is an acute diarrheal disease and um, it's, it's highly infectious. Uh, that is caused by Vibrio cholerae. Uh, this is a bacteria um, and it kills very, very fast if left untreated. Um, and, and normally it's because of uh, the complications of dehydration. So the figures that have been estimated to be of cholera cases keep fluctuating and we cannot really pinpoint and say this is the actual figure, but we use this figure, especially from World Health Organization. And the reason why we can't really have an exact figure is because there are some cases of underreporting uh, of cholera cases. However, the deaths have been put to somewhere at the range of 100,000 to 120,000 deaths, uh, cholera deaths per year. So as I said earlier, cholera is a disease that is, um, has caused major, major kind of um, um, outbreaks in the world. And um, we have had several epidemics uh, and pandemics all over the uh, different continents. So the current or the seventh uh, pandemic, um, which started around Asia uh, in 1961 and reached uh, Africa in 1971, um, killed a lot of, a lot of people. However, currently cholera is uh, endemic in most Asian countries and African countries. So, um, as we said earlier, the etiology of the cause of this uh, disease is the bacterium, um, which is a gram-negative uh, bacteria called Vibrio cholerae. And um, this one, um, it, it does not form spores, therefore it is easy, easy, easy to kill it. And, and based on this fact, even in the prevention and control, just boiling of water or heating it um, above temperatures of 55 degrees for over 15 minutes renders the bacteria null and void. So uh, just killing it is uh, okay. However, it can survive in saline conditions and, and uh, especially in fish. Um, so mostly uh, the Vibrio cholerae will basically not survive for so long. Uh, unless it is uh, on seafood. So in fish and, and, and shellfish, uh, the Vibrio cholerae may survive for um, two to five days. Okay, so um, then um, up to 80% of the cases that, um, that uh, of Vibrio cholerae basically are normally treated successfully with uh, oral um, radiation salts. And I also have to say that you have to have a huge load of Vibrio cholerae for, for, for you actually to suffer from the disease. Um, and, and for that, you will you'll require um, uh, quite a, a huge number of uh, bacteria. So 10 to the power of 11 uh, colonies of this bacteria will be required to actually cause a uh, problem. So transmission normally is through ingestion and basically the human is the only known natural host for Vibrio cholerae. So once we ingest contaminated water or food, then we get the Vibrio cholerae in our system, or it can be uh, like fecal orally, as in if somebody ended up touching a fecal content, um, which has been, um, which has this bacteria, 
it will uh, and they put it in their mouth and they will ingest the bacteria so however we have to have a big load of it the incubation period of this uh, bacteria is quite um small therefore um between a few hours to, uh, to, to a few days therefore the time between the ingestion or the infection and when we start having the sensor symptom is quite small okay now how does it cause the disease so we know the transmission is by taking contaminated water or food or fecal or orally and you either touch contaminated um, um you, you touch um like fecal content or stool and it ends up uh, in whichever way it ends up in your mouth so if you ingest it what happens the vibricular eye goes and um, passes the stomach and goes up to your intestines the intestines it just binds okay the vibricular eye attaches itself on the small intestines there it releases a very important toxin this is an exotoxin um which now um uh the, the, the toxin now comes and attaches itself on the surface on the surface of the intestine the epithelial surface this um, toxin has an ability to uh, bind onto the surface on receptors that are found on the surface of the uh, epithelial cells of the intestines and they lead to uh, pumping of um, calcium and also sodium together with water into the lumen of um, of the intestines so Therefore, we'll get a lot of water and we'll get a lot of um, sodium and also potassium being pumped into the lumen and we lose it, we lose it via, um, via the diarrhea itself, okay? So because it's in the lumen, now we, we get it out. So you end up losing a lot of water, you end up losing a lot of sodium, you end up losing a lot of potassium. So that patient ends up being dehydrated, being uh, hypokalemic, hyponatremic, and so on. So the features that we expect, therefore, is uh, an acute or uh, onset of diarrhea, acute watery diarrhea, and this toxin is um, is um, a bit different from like the toxin that are produced from um, like Salmonella typhi, uh, with the fact that it does not go and affect, it does not go and injure the the, the, the lining of the of the intestine, so it does not cause destruction. So therefore, we don't have a uh, watery uh, we don't have a uh, bloody diarrhea we just have watery diarrhea because what happens is just we just affect the pumping of the water and the water is pumped into the lumen and we basically do not affect or cause any corrosion of the intestines so because of the loss of the water and the electrolyte we have severe dehydration and electrolyte imbalance we have end up having hypovolemia hypotension because we are losing the water and that will end up affecting the renal functioning okay then uh, the electrolyte loss as i said will lead to hyponatremia hypocalcemia also will end up having hypoglycemia um, especially in children so all this will be because of the hypokalemia and the electrolyte imbalance you have things like muscle weakness uh, cardiac arrhythmias and uh, ultimately we might end up having shock and the patient actually dies so in terms of diagnosis, diagnosis the, the, the classical diagnosis for uh, diarrhea is using the, the case definition, basically, of the signs and symptoms. So basically, the case definition of cholera is acute watery diarrhea, okay? In a patient five years of age or older who develops acute watery diarrhea with or without vomiting. So... Um, uh, other than this case definition, um, diagnostic um, laboratory diagnostic methods can be used by like using dark field microscopy to actually be, uh, be able to identify the Vibrio cholerae. So in terms of management, now the number one problem in uh, cholera is not even the bacteria. The problem is now the, lo uh, the losing of water and the dehydration. So what we want to do at first is try to rehydrate and also um, um, bring back some of the electrolytes we've lost. So in severe cases, or, um, in severe, except in severe cases, ORS may be used if it is just mild. So this oral solution are made of salt and glucose, and we know we were in a state of hypoglycemia and electrolyte imbalance, so this will go to rectify that. And the volume of replacement will, will depend on the amount of loss. But in severe dehydration, this one is characterized by um, body uh, uh, 
uh, when we lose weight, lethargy, hypovolemia, acidosis, and all these uh, manner of things. So in such patients, IV rehydration or intravenous rehydration is necessary, okay? So, and this has to be done very fast before we start having the patient deteriorating. So the o o ORS or the oral radiation therapy has some um, electrolytes in it, it has some glucose in it, and all this is to try and rectify the problem that has been caused with uh, water loss and um, electrolyte loss. The nutrition supplement is also very important, especially zinc supplements, because we lose this, especially um, uh, during the uh, diarrhea, and also it helps um, in handling the diarrhea. So vitamin A supplement, supplementation is also very important. Now in terms of complications, remember we are having hypokalemia, hyponatremia, hypoglycemia, so we might have renal uh, failure occurring, or we can even go into pulmonary edema due to the intravenous uh, therapy uh, that we're trying to give back to the patient who is losing all this. Um, now, in terms of um, but uh, in terms of uh, antibiotic treatment, remember I said this is not the most important thing. The most important thing is rehydration. Rehydration, that is the most important thing in cholera. So, um, however, as as you're doing the rehydration, it's also good to handle the bacteria. So, antibiotics that are used uh, for this, uh, especially tetracycline, uh, doxycycline. Um, also, we have cotrimoxazole can be used, um, but we also have ciprofloxacin is also a, a good antibiotic for, for cholera. So in terms of prevention, very easy. We ju just have to understand the transmission cycle and also how the bacteria behaves. So because it's a fecal, fecal oral uh, disease or con um, contaminated water or food disease, then you just have to make sure that the water is handled very well. Um, things like boiling of water is uh, very important. Uh, cleanliness or hygiene, um, adequate sanitation um, of um, uh, uh, adequate sanitation facilities uh, for the disposal of feces is very important. Um, so all this uh, can be used to control um, cholera. And if, if not done, cholera can easily kill somebody very, very fast.